Perry Mason takes on a case that is 25 years old. Today was a day that Sherry and her daughter had suffered through for the past 25 years. The day had been a quiet day with Sherry's husband Ralph going to work and Sherry staying home with the new baby. Sherry worked at the phone company night so that they could avoid daycare costs and their daughter could spend more time with her parents. But that Ralph, that day Ralph was late. There were no cell phones at the time and Sherry had found herself pacing back and forth, worrying about where he was and what would happen to her as far as the job was concerned. When Ralph hadn't come home, and it was now very late. Sherry picked up her daughter and went over to her neighbors to borrow the phone. Even though she worked at the phone company, there was no phone in the house. Some people had thought that strange. However, it was just one more thing and one more bill that Sherry and Ralph had decided to avoid as they were saving to buy a house. Sherry called Ralph's work and got Fred on her husband's, who was her husband's supervisor. The words that Fred said that day will haunt us to this day. Ralph had never made it to work, and they were surprised that no one had called. That was when Sherry panicked. She thanked Fred and made a call to the police. Joe Clark was reminiscing about what had happened 25 years ago on this very day. He was a police officer in a small town and was very young. He had only been on the force for about a year when he had gotten a call about a man who was missing. The man was young and had a small baby. There had been no reports of any cars broken down on that day. And he knew Ralph. Ralph was a good man, but he tended to lack some responsibilities, as many young men do. That afternoon, as Officer Clark took down the information, he listened and wrote down everything that he could. He reported all the information and promised Sherry that he would have everyone on the police force looking for him. But the search went on and on, and eventually it was assumed that Ralph had just left his family. Many young men were overwhelmed with the responsibility of a family and would leave them. It was a sad part of life. But Sherry had not believed that Ralph had just gone off and left her and Mary forever. She put up missing posters and went over the route that her husband would have taken on his work to that, on that fateful day a thousand times. The answer had always been the same. Her husband was nowhere to be found. She tried to get on with her life, move back with her parents. They only lived about seven miles away and loved the chance to be with her and Mary. Bob Shearer was the head of the DPW in town. It had been time to clean the canal. It was something that had been done about twice a year and you never knew what you were going to be finding as you emptied the water. He had found bikes, wagons, but his worst fear was that someday he'd find a body. Some of the parts of town could be a little rough and fights could happen at bars. The draining of the canal would take a day and Bob was very busy when he got notified that his worst fear had come true on that very day. There had been a car found in the cow this time, and inside there was a body. When he gets to the spot, the police were already there, including the state police. Joe Clark was there and shaking his head. There at the bottom of the canal had been Ralph Walden all this time. He recognized the car and the plates and knew that they were his. Now he had to go and tell Sherry. Sherry had been getting ready for work when she heard the knock on the door. She could see the police cruiser in the driveway and knew something was up. As she went to the door, she saw that it was Joe Clark and he wasn't smiling. It was then that she found out that she was a widow and her daughter would never know her father. How, how could this happen, she cried out. 
didn't you check the canal? He went over that bridge on his way to work every day. We saw nothing to break, no breaks, no indication that the bridge, you know, he had gone over it. There was no safety fence at the time. We looked but found no evidence. I'm truly sorry. That was all he could say. The next few days, Sherry had been with Sherry been a blur. She had to arrange the funeral shortly. He and his body his, and live with the fact that the man she loved would no longer be seen or returning. How sad. The weather had been sunny and bright that day. What could have caused to land in the, in the canal? It just didn't make any sense to her. Dr. Matthew McGregor had been the coroner for, mm. for the county for many years and never looked forward to finding a, a body or not doing an autopsy on someone so young with a wife and young child. When he got the call, he went right down to the canal and supervised the removal of the body. The water had done a lot of damage, there were several, but there were several things that could be salvageable. And whenever there was a case of death with no witness, these pieces were very important. Matt put the body of the young man named Ralph Alden into the, into the van and went back to his shop. At first, everything looked as though he had just somehow landed in the canal. There were injuries to the body that did indicate some sort of car crash. But not too far into the autopsy, he discovered that Ralph had been dead when he had entered the water. All of these pieces of paper were very important now. He picked up the phone to call the police. Chapter 1. <laughs>